Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another ServiceNow Express blog video blog session on the topic of the ServiceNow CMDB. Today's demo we're going to be looking at how you can utilize the CMDB throughout the ServiceNow platform with simple configurations to drive additional value. So we're going to take a look at a very simple start, just our computer record here. It's part of the out-of-box ASIN configurations with some of the modules you'll find there. And let's talk about adding some new fields to begin tracking the life cycle of this given computer record. So in ServiceNow, we just right-click the header and navigate to form design anytime we want to make a new field. So here I'm going to navigate to field types where I'm going to find the choice field. I'm going to simply name it life cycle to fall in line with what we'd like to track. And then I'm going to name the column name. So name is the column name, label is life cycle to life underscore cycle and press save. Now we can see the choice field is successfully on my form. I can simply right click the label and select configure choices to begin adding the different states I see as my life cycle. So uh, some simple examples could range from inventory and then we can do something along the lines of in use for when it's assigned to an employee. We can do maintenance for when it's in the shop or being repaired within the office. And finally for retired, you know, maybe I've got a graveyard of retired assets that you steal parts from. So we press save and just like that, we now have a life cycle field available to us on our computers to begin tracking the life cycle. But more than that, we're gonna wanna see a way that we can actually see those changes to the life cycle over time. And we're going to do that on our CMDB forms by again right clicking, going to form design. And this time we're going to search for an existing field that if you search for activity, you'll find the activities filtered formatter. Now you can personalize where and how these forms look exactly how you'd like, but I'm just going to do a new section and I'm going to throw that activities filtered formatter on there. Additionally, a second thing I'm going to add is the CI relations formatter which will let me map upstream and downstream parent-child relationships. So we're going to call this, let's say, asset details, and I'm going to press save once more. When I navigate back over to my form in ServiceNow, we'll notice that all our computer records will now have those two sections. A, the asset details for the relationships, and B, importantly, the full activity of the asset lifecycle. And this is really essential in finding out whose hand was an asset in, you know, did it go to Bob, and when Bob left the company, it went to Jill, and so on. I right-click the activity section there, and I add it in now from the left available to the right, that lifecycle field we created. And that's what's going to let us, you'll notice when I change the value and press save, it's what's actually going to let us see that track over time of changes. So what comes up in the activity formatter is completely up to you. You can just right click and edit it. The second item of functionality we'll note is that concept of the maps. So if I press plus to add a CI relationship to this computer, I can easily map it and add some dependencies for upstream or downstream items. So although this is commonly used with more value for large business services, like when emails down, you can correlate it to a keyboard or excuse me you can correlate it to like a server exchange server and so on but in this example I just added over a keyboard and just like that when I look at the map I now have my computer linked to a keyboard so up to you on what you'd like to link you can remove filters add filters but it's a great way to see in a visual manner what's going on in your environment so uh, another thing to note as we move along with these configurations is the value of having all your data in a single system of record with ServiceNow Express. So let's do some configurations that will take advantage of that. Keenly and mainly in terms of what we refer to as related lists. So by right clicking the header once more and heading to related lists, I'm going to simply add three related lists I see very beneficial for incidents, problems, and um, change requests, and maybe even change tasks. So this way, any time in the system when our help desk is working on something, we're going to have direct insights in terms of the full asset history of what went on with that CI. 
So when I save that and I added those related lists, and I'll just switch to tab form view here so it's easier to see, you'll notice at the bottom of all the computer records will then be links to the incidents affecting it, the problems affecting it, change requests, and change tasks. So a second place where that related list is very important is the user record. I just clicked into Annie's user record there for my reference field, and I'm going to do the same thing, right-clicking the header, going to configure, related lists, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the field from the configuration items pointing to assign to. So this way, anytime I look at a user record, I'll understand all the assets or CIs we as a company have assigned to a given person. So I simply throw that over. I can select now my configuration item. I can see directly that Annie has her INE IBM. So this is tremendously valuable. For example, if someone's on the phone, if it's Annie, she called in, she says, hey, my computer's running to issues, you know, it's running slow. Rather than doing quick follow-up and having to email her for more information, we can now just click that reference field, drill into Annie's user record, and scroll down and understand it's Annie's IBM she's complaining about. So this is all seamlessly linked, meaning when we save this incident, when I head back to this Annie IBM configuration item record, that related list will now be populated with that one incident. So rather than just lifecycle of directly on that asset, we can now also track its effects and impacts throughout the business with the service desk natively on the platform here. Another common configuration as you stand this platform up is going to be perhaps when you run into a specific item you want to track in your business CMDB that isn't there out of box. You know, maybe it's not a computer, it's not a printer, maybe it's something like monitors. Your company spends a lot of money on a good value monitor and you want to begin tracking who has what monitor. So to do that, we're going to create a new table. That's how we add these new areas in our CMDB. So I had to went to table management, selected create new table, and I'm going to say I want to make a monitors table that's extending from the CMDB or configuration item table. It's important to note. And rather than making a new application, I'm just going to make one existing in my asset and configuration application. So when I come back in, you'll notice the monitors module right there to the left under asset and configuration. And now this is going to point to any new monitor data I'd like to have in the system. So on that note, after you've made your new table, you know, a, lot, a key item to note as well is maybe you want to change data or we want to get data in there in an expedited or quicker manner than just doing one record at a time. So one thing we can do is we can either from the list view personalize our lists and add in those fields we want to change like life cycles, the new field we made and then without even drilling into records I can shift over and select multiple values to be updated in these records. Now depending though on the size of your CMDB and on the frequency of these updates it may make more, make more sense rather than doing this to make these changes or something duplicated in an Excel sheet or if you have the data in your CMDB already somewhere else in an Excel sheet well we could import into ServiceNow a very simple XLS. Better yet we can also offer you an Excel template that you can simply create to import the data in. So keep in mind these templates when we click into them, they're going to be based off of exactly the fields you've made. So when I click and open this template for my CNDBCI computers, you'll notice that the row one across all the columns is all the fields that we have on that computer table. So this is going to include custom fields we've created such as that life cycle field we made earlier. And a neat thing is if it's a choice field, it will limit you automatically with that template to just the legal choices. Because if you put in an invalid data type, an invalid reference, an invalid choice, it's simply going to leave it blank instead. So it's important to note as you import in these assets, you know, A, make sure you line up these column titles here with the fields you're trying to import into. B, make sure the values are as expected. So if it's an integer field, you know, you can't put in a string, it'll be blank. If it's a reference field, you can't put in a reference value that doesn't exist. So if it's assigned to, and the laptop's assigned to Bob, but Bob is not yet a user record, you're going to need to create Bob beforehand. So I created just a test one, test two there, 
and let's head back. We just right click right back into the computer section and then select our insert option. Option We also can do update. And on insert though, we just select that CMDB XLS file. So I just select that file and press upload. And then what the system will do is it'll take me to what we call a staging table. So this is where before we commit this data to be imported, we can quickly glance over any issues, glance over the data is going in, but we'll see that our test one, test two with our lifecycle fields is a success. Now alternative two with this XLS import or manually creating records, we do also have a REST API. So if you want to do a scripted approach to automatically populating or updating the CMDB, you can absolutely do so with our post and patch calls using the REST API. So another value point of having our CMDB data here in ServiceNow after we've put it in either manually with the records imported or through our REST API or discovery, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and also touch on reporting. So those new fields right from the list view we can right click, make a quick pie chart or bar chart on that data to gain high-level insights. But more importantly, we can make immersive reports as well that tie in data from your help desk and combine it with what we're seeing in asset management. So an example of that would be a report on incidents and then the configuration items manufacturer. So for this report, we'll simply pick our data table to be incident. Now again, you could report on all the tables you make or that come from the configuration item CMDB table like computer, server, and so on. But here we're going to go ahead and we're simply going to create a report that shows us all incidents by manufacturer and their priorities. So we can gain insights on the business level and how our assets are doing by manufacturer. So when I run this report, you'll notice that we're now tying in both sides of information what the service desk is working on and the priority of all their incidents and now the vendors, the manufacturers better said, of the different devices. So if we have five Dells and five Lenovo's, but there's only two Lenovo issues and six Dell issues, this could help drive product decisions in the future for procurement and for insights in a business analytics sense in terms of how our assets are performing. So on this topic of benefiting from the native tie-in with your incident problem change service desk, there's a second piece to help expedite the process. And that's the concept of auto-assigning incidents to the support groups of the relevant assets or CIs. So we can do that with a quick business rule and field being set. So on that asset record like the computer, let's quickly hop over and configure our form design once more and add an out-of-box field referred to as support group. Simply drag and drop that over, I'll press save. And in the meantime, when we head over to incident, we're gonna simply right click on any incident record and configure the business rules. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new business rule and call this CI auto assignment. And what it'll do is it'll run on insert or update any time our configuration item field on that record, that incident, is not empty. And what we'll do is we'll set the assignment group to be the same as the assignment group, or better said, the support group of our configuration item. So here I'm selecting my configuration item, configuration item fields, and I'm picking, picking that support group field we just selected. I'll simply press submit. And just like that, I now have a rule that's running that's going to automatically set the assignment group of my different records to be the support group if it's a CI that's specified. So a quick example of that is this Annie IBM. We have the support group as Database San Diego. Well, let's head over and quickly create a new incident. We'll say this is Annie's Annie IBM. And let's see what happens. Just like that, when we go ahead and save or submit, we can see that the assignment group is dynamically database San Diego. So quick and easy and powerful tie-in between the asset management and configuration piece with the rest of the service desk.